Hello painters. We're going to try something a little different today. I'm going to do a uh, live tutorial uh, using some of the new WizKids torture scenery. Uh, so I've already done a little prep work ahead of time. Um, I've primed all the metal stuff black. And then the anything that's going to be mostly wood, I have simply just given a good wash with uh, Army Painter Dark Tone Wash or uh, Citadel Null Oil. And uh, I did save one straight out of the package. So we'll start off by doing that real quick. And really all this is doing is pre-shading for the next step. So get a good sized brush. And uh, I like to wear a glove for this just because it's kind of messy. But just slather it all over it. We need a little bit more. And really all this is doing is filling in those cracks with the black. And when we do our next uh, wash, it's going to help define those areas a little more. And since we want this to look, you know, kind of like old, uh, you know, aged wood, it's going to have a lot of, like, you know, a lot of it's going to have blood, dried blood, and just gunk on it. So it doesn't really matter if it pools up too much. But uh, basically, yep, that's it for the first step. So we will let that dry. And then we will come back and do all of this wood. Next, I'm going to do the cage, the top of the cage, and the two sets of chains. So like I said, all I did was just paint over the pre-primed paint with uh, black. I just used the spray paint. And we're going to dry brush some P3 pig iron, but any dark silver metallic. Will work fine. So get a good amount on our brush, and then we're simply going to wipe it all off. For this step, it doesn't have to be super dry, uh, but for the next step, we do. I like to do a just a downward motion. You can see how that pops it out. We should actually do uh, the inside first. Don't worry about covering every little little piece. You know, uh, you're not really going to see the inside of this. <clears throat> but you do want it to. Uh, have some of that silver and get the top of the bottom of the top and then we can go back to the outside and you can see like I haven't put any more paint on my brush and it still has plenty of paint on it just trying to pop out all those little details I think we will go back sometimes you can just go back to your paper towel and pick up a little bit from where you wiped off before so you don't waste any more paint yeah we are going to need a little more paint so I'm just going to touch it there Wipe off the excess. Maybe do one more pass over each side. And then we will let 
let that dry. While that dries, we can do our chains. I'm kind of going, turning it and going from the center and just pulling down. We want to make sure we have some of those dark recesses. If you just go dry brush all over, then you're going to pick up a lot. You know, you're going to get paint in those areas. But if you keep it sort of one direction, it'll give you more of the dark areas. And then I will do the undersides of where they kind of stick up. Same thing on the second pile. Grab a little more paint. So all of these will be part of the diorama that I'm making for Wiz Kids. And I'm hoping to be able to finish it in time so that they can display it at Gen Con at their booth. And also I'm moving next week so I don't have a lot of time. Alright, so there's that. And you could stop here, you know, and it'd look okay. Um, but we are going to go two steps farther next step we're going to get some cold steel which is just a little bit brighter silver I'm not even washing my brush but get a good amount of that and this time we do want our brush to be fairly dry So you can see it's barely leaving any paint on the paper towel now. And we're not even going to bother with the inside with this step. And we're just going straight down. Just catching some of those highlights, those edges. Same on the chain. All right, there you have it. So you could definitely just stop right here but we want to or I want to add some uh, rust and like weathering so we're gonna let those dry good and we will move on to our wood pieces so we've got the uh, torture cross this is the uh, from the executioner set, the little block that you put your neck on. The bottom of the cage. Uh, this is a table from the one of the older terrain sets, the work workbench and tools. And we have the rack. And we've got two of the stocks. So for this, I like to use, usually for most wood, I really like to do the uh, dark tone wash followed by the intense wood ink from scale color it just has a really nice wood green so get a decent sized brush 
and just cover the whole thing. It just has such a rich wood color. And basically just use it just like a wash. You do not want this to pool up on you though. Though if you are going for more of an old, yucky, crusty wood, it doesn't matter so much if it does pool. Get good coverage. Don't worry about covering up all the other, uh, like the little uh, claws uh, or the metal parts. And just paint right over them. So once you get it covered, I usually dry my brush out, go back, pick up any excess, wick it away. Keep dabbing your brush off. Like that. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and do the same thing with the rest of these pieces. And then we'll come back for the next step. Okay, we're back and all of this has dried you can see that the the sink does leave a glossy finish but before we uh, matte spray it down and pull it down we're going to use some ink tense black ink or you could just use uh, a thin black paint and what I like to do is use this ink to give some definition to the deeper recesses like all the cracks between the boards here so I just take a fine tip brush and just carefully line between the boards This is somewhat optional. But I think it does help just define that a little more. You just, you know, put the put the tip of the brush in the recess and just let the brush guide itself. And then you can also go around all the areas where there are two boards connecting and just outline them. Like that. Oops. So very simple, fairly quick little detail. And then don't forget the sides as well.
And that'll probably do it for now on this piece. We're going to come back and paint the chains and the manacles. And then, so we'll do the same thing on the table here. And you could go around and do, you know, all the little uh, parts on the legs, but nobody's really going to be looking at that. We'll just do the outsides real quick. The chopping block doesn't really need anything. And then uh, I think we'll do just a little bit on this part. And then I want to put the line where the stock would be separated. Get a little heavy with my ink there. Let's use my thumb and wipe it away. There we go. Same thing on this side. I'll do this one off camera. And we've got our wood portion of the floor. This one I'm just going to hit some of the larger cracks. You kind of, when, it, when it, the grain is this deep, like on this piece, you can kind of just do some random lines. Don't be afraid to wipe it off if you do. Too much. Uh, it just gives a little more definition. And then lastly our little cross. And really, there's not much point in doing most of this stuff because, you know, all the areas, like when we paint these cloths and uh, the metal parts, that's going to help define it. So we don't really need to black line them. And we can always do it later. But the next part for this stuff is to spray it with a matte varnish and give it that shine. So I'll come back after that. Okay, and we're back. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you guys is whenever I have to like use spray varnish on small pieces like this, I just take a little piece of uh, blue tack or poster putty and uh, try to keep it on the bottom. And just stick that to a carver box, a pizza box. And that helps keep it from uh, blowing all over the place when you spray it. So, little tip there. But now we've got all of our pieces. We got rid of the uh, gloss on them. And I mean, they're pretty much ready to go. You could 
dry brush a little gray on them if you want them a little more weathered looking. But uh, I think it's, since these are all indoor type pieces, I'm going to skip the gray. So I think for now, we will go back and work some more on our cage and chains. So for that, I'm going to use some, let's see, I like the Secret Weapon Rust series. I think there are six total uh, different colors, but I usually do three. So really it's just a kind of a dark reddish brown, sort of a lighter reddish brown, then like an orangish brown. So shake a little bit of that up. And then I also like to use just some uh, pluck foam. And what I do is I put some of this on my palette. And then I just tear off a little chunk like that and get some tweezers. Hold it like that. Dip it in the paint. And then it's kind of like dry brushing. So you want to get most of it off. As you can see, you want it to where it's kind of speckly when you push it on there. And then we'll just take it and just kind of randomly putting some on. I dabbed off a little bit too much. You can be a little more aggressive with this first color. not quite as uh, perceptible but it's kind of randomly you know basically trying to get like I don't know 30 percent coverage or so going to give it some visual interest. I need a little more paint. You can't really see too much of this on camera probably, but uh, it's kind of basically just laying the groundwork for the next colors. And we'll do the same thing with the chains. Don't want your chains brand new looking in your torture chamber. grab another little piece of foam and we'll go to our next color I should say the uh, the first one I'm using is brown rust the second one is called red rust and when you're doing this usually you know if you're doing it on a larger piece like this cage you're putting so little paint on that the paint dries pretty quickly so we don't really need to wait to do any more so same thing with this one and I'm trying to go over you know some of the, mostly the same areas that I did before it doesn't really matter, but I 
But even though we're using a lot of, you know, different colored paints to do this, it's a pretty quick process. And again on our chain. gradually building up those layers. Like that. Now we'll move to our third color, the orange rust. <clears throat> Pull off another piece of little foam. Now this one's probably more noticeable, so we're going to dry it off a little more. Now, if you want it really, really rusty, then, you know, just do the same thing, but use a lot more of the uh, previous colors. Get a little more paint. So, as you can see, in just a matter of a few minutes, you get a pretty nice effect. Put it on a little thicker in places if you want it to stand down a little more. And I think we're going to go ahead and go one step further and use the Citadel uh, Rise of Rust, which is a dry paint. And what I like to do is get a little smear of it I and mean, put it in a bottle cap or some sort of palette. And then just squirt a little bit of water and stir it all up. Try to get that to dissolve. <clears throat> now this when it goes on, it's going to look more intense than it will when it dries. So, as you can see, that looks like really bright. But when it dries, it will not look like that. If you want it to be more intense, then just don't water it down. Just kind of brush it on wherever you want. And then I'll 
I'll come back and show you when it dries what it looks like. Let me go ahead and do the chains. Depends on how rusty you really want them. Like that. So you can see how you know, it looks really orange right now. And then that's pretty much gonna do it for our metal pieces. And what I haven't showed you yet is the Iron Maiden. For this one, all I've done so far is turn my air compressor off there. I base coated it with this P3 Battlefield Brown, but any brown, dark brown will work. And then I used my airbrush and just covered the whole thing with some Vallejo Metal Color uh, Gold. Uh, you, you know, you can obviously just paint, paint brush it on. But I would go for a greenish, yellowish gold versus like a red gold, like say uh, Army Painter Greedy Gold. It's got more of a coppery, reddish tone to it. I went with the uh, the greener gold, and it really looks pretty good as it is. But uh, I think what I want to do is put some steel colors in between all of the little bars so I'm gonna grab my metal color magnesium and this paint is very thin so you do not need to thin it and it also covers really well. So I'm just going to carefully go in between all of the bars. Like so. that and I'll go ahead and do that I'll finish that off camera but you get the idea so back in a minute okay we're back so as you can see I painted all of the uh, inside of the little bars with the magnesium and same on the inside on the inside I started to be really careful and uh, not you know try to get any of the silver out of the gold and then when I was Deep in here, it was getting kind of tedious, so I kind of just threw some silver in there. We're going to put a bunch of blood and stuff like that in our, inside it, so it's really not going to matter. Um, but you do want to do a good job on the outside. So next thing I want to do is use some Army Painter Strong Tone, which is their dark brown wash. And... By the brush there we go and normally for gold I use a brown wash uh, and normally for silver I do a black wash but since they're both together we're just gonna go with the brown because it will work better with the gold I'm not liking that brush for one second. All right, new brush. Now this is going to dull the metallic quite a bit. If you didn't want to, you could use the 
Citadel gloss washes the Agrax Earthshade one but once again we're going for a dirty dingy dungeon torture room so don't really want super shiny but give it a real good coat Side as well. This is also going to help cover up some of our sloppiness on the inside. All right, now that we've coated the whole thing go back wick away any uh, large pools just wipe it off on our towel brush off the uh, smooth parts you don't want any wash to dry on that Just keep wicking away. Put a little more on this inside here. Don't worry about the pooling on the inside. But well, there you go. That's pretty much it for this, except for uh, the blood effects, which we'll do after it dries. And then at the same time, I wanted to show you guys the uh, rust has dried on here. It did go a little oranger than I wanted it to. Uh, I probably should have thinned it a little bit more. But we should be able to just take some of this wash and use that to tone down the orange if you think it's too bright I'm okay with it in some areas like here that, that's more what I was going for but in the spots where it went on a little thick like right there I want to tone that down just a little bit so it's not like bright orange. And this is an easy way to fix that. You can also just, you know, dry brush a little more of your steel color over it. You can see with the chains, this one ended up more like I was wanting it to, whereas I got a little heavy on the orange on this one so same thing put a little wash where it got too heavy and that's that now uh, I went ahead and painted on the cross this little metal beam and the little rings uh, same color as the, the magnesium steel color that we used on here and I also did the chains on the rack and the manacles and the little uh, silver pieces on there and some of the nuts and bolts and the hinges. Uh, the table didn't have any uh, metal pieces that I noticed, nor the base for the cage, nor the chopping block. The stocks have a few little bolts that you can do if you want, and there's also a padlock 
and a hinge on each side. So I did those. So now we're just going to wait for our Iron Maiden to dry. And then we will come back and we're going to do uh, blood and uh, yeah, just pretty much just need to add some blood to some of these things. And that will be it for the terrain portion. So back in a minute. All right, and we're back. So I've decided not to do any of the blood effects in this video. Um, in the next videos, I'm going to be painting the executioner and the torture room assistant. So in those, after I do those two videos, these guys are going to need some blood on them too. So we'll do all of the blood effects together along with, uh, on the actual diorama board itself but uh, one last thing I have decided to do a little more uh, dry brushing after the wash has dried on this and I've just chosen a uh, it's a Reaper sample paint but it's just a little bit brighter lighter uh, gold than what we started with so we we'll get a little of that I want this to be really really dry Do a little test on my finger. And this is just going to help get some highlights, bring a little bit of the shine back. It's going to help pop out some of those details in the face. A little more paint. And I'm going to try to just kind of hit the raised edges on the little bars. Help pop out those rivets. A little bit on the inside. And I'll go back one more pass. Hit the floor. That looks pretty good. So we're going to stop this video here and uh, I'll see you in part two where we're going to do the executioner. Thanks. See you next time.